Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. It really means a lot to me. My boys are my family, so thank you so much for being here. Um, a lot of you know the history of Coro de Flauti, but some of you don't, so I wanted to mention how this came about. Three really good friends, Karen, Becky Grote, back there, and Judy Pearson, uh, got together a couple times a month, starting maybe 12 or 13 or 15 years ago, to play flute trios. And then several years later, they thought, well, this would be really a wonderful way to kind of, you know, transition into a flute choir, because there are a lot of really fine flute players in the area. And out of that flute trio of Becky, Karen, and Judy, Cora de Flauti was born. And so the three of them were the co-founders. And I would like to point out in the program, you'll see a reference to Judy Pearson. Judy passed away just about a year ago, and so we certainly want to remember her today as well. You know, Karen was so many things to all of us here. Of course, she was uh, a daughter, sister, aunt. She became a great aunt just shortly before she died. Sister-in-law, cousin, niece, and to many of you, a very good friend. Uh, she was also really a brilliant musician and educator. Above all, of course, she was a wife and a mom. That's what she was most passionate about. And her whole life was dedicated to me and to Sean and to Ryan. And they're both here today, right over there. So. And of course, Karen was a lot of other things too. She was pretty funny. She was pretty sarcastic. Sometimes a lot of you know that in a good way. Um, I'll never ever forget her laugh. She was compassionate, she was caring in so many ways that some of you know about, but sometimes people don't know about, just things, things that she did. She was very faith-filled, very spiritual. Um, her faith meant a great deal to her, but one of the things I really admired about her faith, it was very, very down to earth, very inclusive, it was, just, it was just a beautiful faith and a beautiful spirituality that she exhibited. The music you're hearing today is music that Becky and I chose a couple of years ago as what we felt were Karen's favorite flute choir pieces. And they represent all those aspects of her personality, her playfulness, her sarcasm, her humor, and probably most especially her, her spirituality. So uh, one work I would like to mention specifically, uh, there's a piece that we'll be playing later uh, called There Is No Rose. And I think of all the pieces in Coro de Flauti, that's the one that I and many others most associate with Karen. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of music. It's, it's about the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, it has a beautiful, beautiful piccolo solo in it, and it's just incredible. So I wanted to mention that ahead of time. Uh, as we play, you can just think about Karen in a very, very special way. So thank you for being here and enjoy. Okay, there's some poetry that goes with this next piece. Dizzy Jig. There was a leprechaun who always danced and played his flute in the hallways. His tone didn't please, but when he would sneeze, his high notes were just like Jane Galway's. He whirled and he twirled and he spun. So many turns had he done that he was so dizzy and in a great tizzy, for his jig was over before it had begun.
lip gloss. There is nothing so lovely or with such an allure as a perfectly formed flute embouchure. Your lips should clamp down, said my friend with a frown, a clarinetist who actually disagreed. But I would contend the sound that I send is better and I don't need a reed.
Quicksilver. The gods of embarrassment always humble me whenever I play Flight of the Bumblebee, and I try to be oh so careful when playing Mendelssohn Scherzo. I flail and I fail, and the question pops into my head. My flute is made of silver. Why are my fingers made of lead? So this next piece, Ghost Dancers, um, your programs are phenomenal uh, and uh, so self-explanatory. So I won't go into much, but I would like to just uh, have you uh, be able to see an ocarina. For those of you that may not have seen an ocarina and especially have heard one played so well. So Ashley Peterson plays this for us on this. And you want to just play that? She'll play. This is The Lament. This is uh, what the composer I mean, this is in um, respect of the, all those that were killed, uh, the Native Americans at Wounded Knee, and so this is the lament that you'll hear. Yeah, so that's, give her a little hand, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So this is a, I mean, uh, it's a, you know, a very tragic event and this programmatic music really depicts the, the battle and everything so wonderfully. So uh, without further ado, this is Ghost Dancers.
So I failed to mention that we had a guest artist on that piece, uh, Bob Snyder, who is over there now. So Bob, if you wave a uh, hand, we appreciate his work on that. Thank you, Bob. Uh, this next piece is uh, just, uh, well, Mike touched on it. It's just absolutely a glorious piece. And the composer is, uh, uh, his notoriety is from his choral writing. Um, I mean, he was a choral instructor, but, and also a composer. And so you'll, this will sound, I mean, obviously it's called a flute choir, but to me this will sound like a choir to you, and it's just a, an absolutely gorgeous arrangement. So this is There Is No Rose.
Okay, our next piece is the commission uh, that was written in special honor of Karen, uh, entitled Remembrance. After Karen died, I knew one of the things myself and my family wanted to do was to remember Karen musically, and there was no better way to do that than through Coro de Flauti. Um, and so I needed to decide who was gonna write the piece. And there were two primary uh, facets to that. Of course, number one, the most important, is it had to be a good composer. That's the whole point. But number two, if it was someone that was a friend, someone that knew me, someone that knew Karen, that would even be better. And that person was found in Jay Gilbert. And Jay is the head of the instrumental music program at Doan University in Crete. He's been there for many, many years. He's retiring this year, shortly. Um, but Jay, I knew Jay's work from, Jay has written a lot of band literature, and from my time at Pius High School with the band, I was familiar with, with Jay's work in, uh, in band music. And so I asked him if he would like to take on writing a piece in honor of Karen. He told me he had never written a flute piece before, and I know I put him on the spot as a friend to do so, but I think the end result is just so magnificent. And the way this process worked was Jay and I met often for lunch, because you can think better over food. And the first few times, we didn't even talk much about music. We talked about Karen. Um, he wanted to know more about her, what I wanted the music to represent. And so it was a really, it was a wonderful, wonderful process. Um, I already talked a little bit about some of Karen's personality traits, but I knew I wanted the piece to be beautiful and spiritual. Um, I wanted somehow to honor the aspect of her teaching career. Um, and of course, I wanted some whimsy in it too and playfulness because that was Karen also. And it had to have a lot of piccolo, and, and it does. So the piece that Jay wrote was just incredible. And every time I hear it, I hear different things within it that I haven't heard before. Um, there's a little two note motive in the piece. A motive is just a tiny short melody and you'll hear it, but it's a little descending whole step. And it's meant to be somewhat of a sigh. I always like to hear it also as the two syllables in Karen's name, Karen. And so anytime you hear that, you could maybe think of a sigh or, or, or think, of, think of Karen. Um, the piece is divided into a beautiful opening section that is certainly very spiritual, very beautiful. Um, and then it goes into a very lively, playful section. And, and I think it really depicts that part of Karen's personality. There's even a little spot where it sounds almost to me like the alphabet jingle that elementary school kids sing. And I always think of that as a little bit of a reference to her. For all the years she did, she had teaching fifth and sixth graders how to play instruments and to her educational career. Um, after, toward the end of that section, it transitions back into a more beautiful spiritual ending. And the transition, you'll note that something tragic is happening. And then it leads into what I like to think of um, kind of moving into eternity, moving into the beauty of eternity. There's a beautiful phrase that's, that's said, that's prayed at a Catholic funeral. It's short, and I hope I get through this. <laughs> but it just simply says, in death, life is changed. Not, and, and, so here's remembrance. Jay, would you stand up? I'll have you stand up at the end, but you can stand up twice. Go ahead. <laughs>
kind of speechless at the moment. <laughs> I would love, I need to, and love to thank so many people who contributed to this performance today. I'd like to thank, of course, North American Martyrs Parish, Father Connor, the pastor here, for allowing us to use their beautiful space. Stacy Pfeiffer is in charge of music at Martyrs, and the way she got involved is I called her many months ago and asked her, she has choir practice on Thursday nights, and we wanted to have a dress rehearsal Thursday night. So I asked her if it'd be okay if she could move her choir <laughs> rehearsal, and of course she graciously said yes, but she also turned into our sound engineer. And, and I want to thank you so much for everything you've done. Uh, Christian Anderson, who's up in the choir loft, he's a former student of mine. Christian is um, handling the live stream for this performance. I'd like to thank, of course, Jay Gilbert again, um, April Stevenson for the beautiful, the gorgeous program. Thank you, April. Carolyn Dow for the program notes. A special thank you to Lindsay and Alyssa for their beautiful piccolo playing. When I asked them if they would play those particular pieces, Rose and Remembrance, I knew I was putting them on the spot. But I also knew that they would love to do it and that they would make it gorgeous, and they did. Um, on my notes here, I put to Becky Groat for dot, 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 everything. So Becky, thank you. And of course, I also have to thank most of all these fabulous, not just musicians, but people behind me. Um, I can't thank you enough for the dedication for everything you've done in putting this program together. So thank you so much. Um, and of course, finally, I need to thank all of you here, family, friends of Karen. Uh, I need to thank some, I know there's a lot of special people, family, and friends actually from around the world watching the live stream. Um, I'll just mention, I'm a, I, I belong to a tribe, a tribe of widows and widowers, and we have a little clubs, and it's expanded to a lot of places, and I know some of those special people are watching, and literally from around the world, so you guys are performing internationally and you didn't even know it. So thank all of you so much for being here. It means the world to me, to my family. Um, I debated whether I was gonna read this, but I'm gonna do it. I think I'll get through it, but if I don't, you'll understand, I know. Karen used to leave me notes around the house. Most of the time they were loving notes, most of the time. But she started doing this, especially in the final year before she died, it was almost as if. And, and I have these notes and she would sometimes put them in places that were easy to find, like under my pillow, in my instrument case, in a book I was reading. But sometimes she would put them places where she knew I would find them later on. And ironically, I found a note in my basement on a stack of some school things that she knew someday I would look at. And I found it a couple of years after she had died. And I, I wanna read it to you because I think she's talking not only to me, but maybe to all of us. It's a poem, actually, that many of you may know, by Jan Michelson. And she, she wrote it on a nice piece of paper with a funny-looking saxophone player cartoon, which was appropriate. Um, but in retrospect, I think I was meant to find it when I found it. And so I'd like to share it with you. These are the words of Jan Michelson, but how appropriate for not just me, for my family, but for all of us. So bear with me, it's not very long, but, but I think it's important that I get through this, because this is Karen talking to us right now. Think freely, practice patience. Smile often. Savor special moments. Love, hope, grow. Be crazy, observe miracles, make them happen. Give, trust enough to take, look for rainbows.
work hard, laugh, take time, take a chance, slow down, be soft, reminisce, cry when you need to, have faith, believe. Thank you, but we don't have an